and this is the Questers, that's right. Okay, there, he's still taking me for it. This is the Questers, and please tell. Please come, tell me, what is the, tell me. Come on, come and tell me. She's our president. Okay, this is the president. President, okay. This is the president. Oh, you guys know that. This res this, this. That's the one for the, that's the one for the video camera. Oh, no! Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, introduce yourself. Okay, I am Judy Holland. Another Judy, what is this? Today. Judy, Judy, Judy. Judy, Judy, Judy. Uh, okay, I am Judy Holland and I am with California Questers, and California Questers is with the International Questers. And the International Questers is a study group. Uh, we also raise money for preservation and restoration of um, historical sites. Thank you very much over there. My, my fans are over there helping me. Uh, for historic sites, for artifacts, um, for such things as the uh, Pioneer Mother at Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, all the way to Philadelphia with the uh, Quester Headquarters building, which is there. And we travel on and even do things in Canada. If any of you are interested in Questers, we are a fun group of ladies and men. Uh, we love to collect everything and anything. And tomorrow, tomorrow, all of our girls are going to go out and collect uh, these funny looking tomatoes, peppers, olive oil. <laughs> and um, you can find us on the website. Well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, tell us the website. www.questers1949.com. .org. .com. <laughs> .org? Oh, you can say I don't know anything about computers. <laughs> thank well, you. thank you. Thank you, Judy. Okay, I've known Russ and the Benino family for many, many years. Uh, Russ was a little boy. If you can imagine that. I'm still a little boy. Well, he's still a little boy to me, but he was, what, I don't know, four or five years old. He was a little shorter. But uh, they are a very special family. And uh, I realized that some of you guys went out to the farm today. Yes. And I know that you had a wonderful time. And let's give them a hand for that. And uh, they, they truly are a wonderful family. And they have been in this valley for many, many, many years. And um, my family, uh, my great-grandparents were born in San Francisco, a few of them. My parents, my grandparents, my family. So I'm fourth generation Californian, and my daughter is fifth generation. So we've been here a while. We're travelers. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you've been here a while. So yes, today, I... we're going to make, they're going to come around, they're going to pass around. What I made was, uh, this morning, uh, Russ's brother, Brent, roasted these beautiful peppers that they Actually, grow. Actually, I roasted the peppers. You didn't? Yeah, I did. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this is the problem we have. <laughs> and um, so, as you can see, they're beautiful. I don't know, if you went out there, you probably saw some of these. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's just, they're just magnificent. So the first thing I did is I made a roasted, uh, a roasted um, bruschetta, roasted pepper bruschetta. Nice. So it was, it was nice. And I hope, and they're, they're putting it on some uh, beautiful bread that I toasted with some <coughs> butter and garlic and olive oil. So they'll be bringing that out pretty soon. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made it. Um, Obviously, I chopped this up. We added some <laughs> chopped garlic. We added some olive oil. We added, what this is is some, uh, some uh, let's see. Balsamic. Balsamic vinegar. <laughs> and uh, some, uh, actually, a little bit of balsamic vinegar and some regular red wine vinegar. A little, little mix, because sometimes the balsamic gets a little sweet, and sometimes the regular gets a little too much. And this is our, I don't know if you can smell it, but this is our 
basil, which comes from their garden too. And I chopped a little bit of red onion into it. It's sort of like a, an Italian uh, salad on a piece of bread. There you go. A little bit different than a t tomato. So I'm going to be doing this, and I'm, I hope that you can see this. Uh, I'm going to chop this up, and you want to talk a little bit about... Is it my turn? It's your turn. Okay. <laughs> and, so all I'm going to chop it. Okay. Don't cut your finger. No, but be sure. careful. I've got the knife. Now, okay. You know. All right. But anyway, like everybody said, we've been here for a long time. 92 years. 92 years. Uh, uh, yeah, we claim it to the water. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, we've been raised here, seen a lot of changes. Uh, currently on the farm, we farm about 500 acres. Uh, we double crop a certain amount of acres, which probably puts us in the realm of uh, about 700, 650 or 700. Uh, we raise everything from dry beans, being lima beans. Um, we raise those, we thrash them, they get exported to the UK. Uh, we also raise fava beans. For also for seed production, which also gets exported to Japan. Um, we have numerous seed crops. Uh, we have about 20 acres of flower seed this year. I have about 20 acres of cucumbers for seed. Um, and, see, and then we also have a wider range of vegetables. Corn, raise a couple hundred corn. acres of sweet corn. Fabulous. Um, Fabulous. Three, four, five acres of tomatoes, different types of tomatoes. Um, we do garlic. We have about 20 acres of garlic. And then uh, 100 acres of peppers, different types of peppers, bells, spice, uh, jalapenos, pasillas, anaheims, stuff like that. Um, we have a couple contracts with some canneries that we sell a lot, of, like our bell peppers go to uh, ConAgra. Um, we have uh, a contract for green chili, Anaheim type, the long green, which go to a cannery in Lemoore. Uh, they were supposed to go green, now they're going red. So we're going to ship them in red. And they use their red for color. Uh, they just grind it up, make a paste out of it, and mix it in for color. Um, what else we got? Now we do pumpkins and stuff, and then we have the full fruit stand. And that's basically what our deal is. Uh, my brother, my dad, my brother and myself take care of, my brother takes care of the fruit stand. My dad and myself take care of uh, the fields. Uh, my mom does all the books, and Raquel gives us a lot of support on that part of it. Also, she helps when she can. Um, I have three kids. I have a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, and a 20-month-old baby girl. Yeah, so, yeah, so it, she's got her hands full, um, you know. If they're like you, yes. Yeah. And they, oh, but they have a, they have beautiful children. They have a little girl. She's got red hair. Yeah, a little, a little redhead. We got a little redhead. We named her Lucy. She's. Um, so there's. Okay, so now here, I just, excuse me. Am I done talking now? No, you can continue. Oh, okay. But hold on just one second. As you can see, here, here we have the, um, the bruschetta is coming around now. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, there's a couple different kinds. Is it OK? We, do, we, got, we got thumbs up. There's, there's a couple different ones. There's, like I said, take one of each if you'd like to. Um, OK, well, see what I'm making right here? Yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. So I chopped the pepper, put, I put a little red onion. You've got to be careful with the red onion. Um, if you get a red onion that's really pungent, um, <coughs> soak it in some, slice it, soak it in some cold water with some ice for a while. That will uh, take out some of the, the uh, real heavy pungentness. Mm -hmm. They also say with a red onion, the flatter the onion, the sweeter the onion. Oh, see, now there you go. That that's what they say. The flatter the, the, the red onion, the sweeter it oh, is. But there's no more sweet red onions anymore. They, the red onions are sweet I know. Red, what happened? Sweet reds are done because they double and triple too many times. Being, this is what they call a double. When the center, when the center gets two, two hearts in it, that's, oh. a, that's a double. They don't like that. Stores don't like it. They like, the consumer likes to have a single-hearted red onion because it makes little pieces like that make it tough to put on a hamburger. They always fall off the side. So oh, interesting. That's why, and with the flat sweet onion, they don't last that long. They they can't put them in storage. Well, remember those torpedo onions, mm -hmm. the red torpedoes. Yeah. The Itali are those Italian torpedoes? I no. Your father's going no. That's not. Know. What is that? What are those? I don't know. It's torpedo. Torpedo. It looks like a torpedo. I only remember. Yeah, they're, they're, they're more. They're more pungent. They're, 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 they're really stronger. Can't hear over there. Yeah. Is that my 
Yeah. It's for the camera. It's for the camera. I'm sorry. Mine is for the camera. Shoes is for the you camera. You can't hear over there. Okay. Hello. I can hear you from here. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So now, now I'm going to. Put, no, I got to get back in the. I can put two. Now more. I'm going to put some olive oil in here, and of course I forgot a spoon. Can I borrow one of your <coughs> spoons? See there. Oh, thank now you. I feel like now oh, I feel sweet. like the president. Thank you. <coughs> I know these microphones sitting So we're putting like some this. olive oil. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, sorry. And then we're putting a little. Where's my teleprompters at? <laughs> and then we're putting a little vinegar mixture. And, we, and then, you know, somebody, I don't have any bread, so you. Hello? Hello? I don't think that one's on. on. And then I forgot to tell you, in this one with the peppers, I put a little mixture of some. Can you hear me, uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. In, in the in the in the yeah. in the pepper one, I'm going to put some Italian uh, oregano, dried oregano, and some. Uh, okay, some thyme. Thyme? How much thyme do you want? <laughs> Just remember, Judy I, can, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to mix it up. And of course, I don't have any bread up here. So guess who gets to taste it? Who? Me? Yeah. There's no bread, though. I know. That's OK. And a little salt. This is some kosher salt. <laughs> <laughs> I use, I use kosher salt, and you want to know why? OK, kosher salt is flatter. So technically, you don't use as much salt as you do regular salt. That's, that's the whole kind of point of using kosher salt. It's flatter? Well, it's it kind of, when it go, you know, when you look at the salt crystals of, of salt, there it's a crystal. And if you look at the salt of kosher salt, it's not actually a crystal. It's, it's a little flatter. So technically, you use a little less of it. And it has a little stronger flavor. It doesn't have all the chemicals in it, too. However, it's saltier. Don't use it in baking. <laughs> Do not use kosher salt when you're baking because oh, it's too big. Oh. And I have experienced that. Hmm. You use regular salt when oh. you're baking. You but when you're cooking, you use kosher salt. When you're cooking, use kosher salt. When you're baking, use regular salt. It's a, it just doesn't work. And I made chocolate chip cookies, and I used kosher salt, and I could taste the salt. It hmm. didn't dissolve. And I'm, and I'm being really honest. I'm, I'm not a baker. I'm a cook. Hmm. You know? So I'm putting a little in here. Was that? It was a lot? Oh, well, there's a lot in here. There's no salt in here in anything. OK, now what's this? This is the chopped garlic. Isn't this beautiful? Mmm. It's raw. Now, honestly, if you don't want to put raw garlic because it bothers you, uh, you can roast the garlic first, but the problem with the roasted garlic in this is you don't really get that real garlicky flavor when you roast it. It has a sweeter flavor, right? Yeah. And um, what you could do is in this and as in anything is you could use half roasted garlic and half fresh garlic. That's a nice combination. Did okay. you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a nice combination. So we have any questions? We any have any question? questions for Russ? You have any questions? I, I didn't see what the green was. Oh, the green is basil. What is basil? Yeah, the green is basil. If you're not a basil fan, some people, I don't know, you could use Italian parsley, or you could use <coughs> Italian parsley and basil. So you could use a combination. It kind of depends. On Italian parsley being the flat parsley. If you don't like Italian parsley, use the curly one. It has a different flavor to it, but everybody has, you know, their own taste. Or you could just leave it out completely. No. Huh? No. No? Oh, okay. No, you can't leave it out. You can't leave it out? No. But you put peppers in there, right? Yeah, but you got to put the basil in there. Here. Okay. 
Let me hold it. I'll take it. Mm, it's good. It's good. Good. Don't put the spoon back no, in. I can't put the spoon back in. Okay. Now I need another spoon. I promise I'll get you. An, I'll, I, I promise I will get you another spoon. Okay. Oh. Were there we have any questions? Any for, questions for Russ? Yes, okay. ma'am. Which could you come up? Could, come on, come on up here. That's what we're gonna do right now. That, did you did you have the? Okay. Huh? The lady asked, "Can we use fresh tomatoes?" This was this one was that way too, a thinking. roasted pepper. Uh, bruschetta type of thing. You could do. I don't know. Are they passing around the roasted tomato? I mean, the tomato one right now. This is traditionally. I guess the tomato is more traditional than than the roasted pepper one. Uh, if you can't, this would. This being the roasted pepper. This is the fresh tomato. Now I'm going to use the fresh tomato. Can you put them both together? You, of course. Yep. What a good idea. No, I'm he's brainstorming so, here. He's brainstorming. So, he's so creative. Actually, you know what you could do with this? Think of what you could do with this. You could get some pizza dough and put this on some pizza dough Ooh, and with good. some cheese. If you're vegetarian, great. This would be great. It's a little different. You could actually then mix it with the fresh tomatoes. Or you could put just sliced tomatoes on like they do. And actually, in Italy, they take rocket, which is arugula, and they put it on the pizza after the pizza comes out of the oven. It's fabulous. Hmm. Have you ever done that? No, I haven't. You'd like make a salad of arugula with a, some olive oil and a little bit of vinegar. And when the pizza comes out, you throw that on top. It's, hmm. it's fabulous. Sounds interesting. <laughs> OK, so here we go. Any other questions? Any other questions? You want? Uh huh. Come, come up, stand up, and come up. Here. Come on. What's the difference in raising something to eat, raising it to seeds? Uh, because. You have to. Did you get that? Well, it's it's okay. seed. Huh? Yeah, come up. So he, her her question was, what's the difference oh. for raising things to eat or raising things for seed? All things that we eat come from seeds. They need a certain. You got to replenish it. The standing order that is supposed to apply to every vegetable, any kind of living thing, it remultiplies itself by 3,000%. So one seed will generate 3,000 more seeds. So when I get seed companies, when we have seed companies come to us, they say, okay, well, they know how many acres they need, and they say, okay, we need 20 acres of cucumbers. They know at the end result, what the yield is going to be to generate a certain amount of seed. They take that seed, they wash it, they clean it, they turn it around, they resell it back to brokers, back to people that package it, ends up at Home Depot, ends up at Orchard Supply in the little packs, ends up back in the grower's hands like myself. But you don't have to leave it in the field longer or shorter? Or uh, no, it's, it's a roughly the same time, same time. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it, it, you have to plant things according to the calendar. So, you know, there's times you got to plant things and times you don't because you run out of days on the backside, which we're in now. We're on the backside of the calendar. So uh, day, things that need long day, uh, you can't plant them. So a lot of things that are being planted now would be like your coal crops, the lettuces, stuff like that, need a little bit of shorter time. And they can survive at 60 degrees. So um, a fava bean? No, is not a fava bean. No, there's about three... There's three different varieties of fava beans that I know of. One type would be the Windsor type, which is a long pod, and it has about five or six beans, smaller beans in it themselves. The ones I raise are Japanese type. They're a shorter pod, but they got beans in them about the size of a quarter. And they only got about three or four beans per pod. And I raise two types. I raise that longer one, and I raise a smaller one, which is uh, it's just a number, but it gets about that big. And it also it has a flavor of, along the lines of like a mixture of uh, fava and garbanzo in the same thing. I didn't get anything, did you? So they, the Jap, when they get exported to Japan, whoops, you got it? Hey, how you doing back there? Um, when they get exported to Japan, 
there's a certain grade that goes to repackaging for production to sell okay. to, to, to growers. Then there's also a certain percent that goes to, um, they, they soak them in sugar water and when they're dry. They soak them, they peel the skin off them, and then they fry them in salt and oil. Mm -hmm. And they eat them like corn nuts in the bars or whatever. They're actually pretty good. And of all the beans out there that are in production now, fava is the one that has the most protein out of them all. Highest content of protein. Any other questions? Now you guys can hear me? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh. Hold on. Is it your turn I'll let now? you ask questions. Hold on. Let me just make this. Okay. 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 No, I got one. Speaking, no, you got to oh. speak for them. Hi. <laughs> I thought you were making okay, pizza this is, back there. I thought I was making pizza. Okay, this is the tomato. This is the tomato one you guys had? Okay, then we're just going to put some garlic. Once again, if you don't like raw garlic, roast your garlic. It's not going to be as strong. Um, some people, I don't know if you guys have had it. If it sits for a while and it, and it absorbs some of the, you know, the uh, vinegar and stuff, it kind of takes away some of that pungent taste of the of the garlic. And then we're going to put some, a little bit of the vinegar and a little bit of the oil. Oh, is that real olive oil or is that? Wesson oil. This is extra virgin olive oh, oil. That's what I meant. And the difference between extra virgin and olive oil is extra virgin is first press, meaning that there's no chemicals when they do the first press of the uh, olive. Of the olive. Okay. Now, and the second press is when they start putting chemicals. Now, my my daughter just got back from Greece, and she was telling me that the Greek olive oil is much different. Well, sure it is, because if you go into a store that has a lot of different olive oils, you'll notice that the colors are different. French olive oil tends to be a little lighter. Greek olive oil tends to be a lot greener. It's fruitier, I think. Uh, California olive oil is just wonderful. They make all different kinds. Um, Italian olive oil is wonderful. Uh, it, it has, it, I think Italian probably is mostly what we, what we use, uh, mostly what <laughs> most people gravitate towards. But I really think that uh, there's, there's all different kinds of olive oil. So you need to kind of, when next time you go to the store, take a look, look at the different colors, and, and uh, realize that they actually come from different places. Because technically, just like anything, we are what we eat, just the same as vegetables are what they are fed and where they grow, so their flavors are going to be different. Okay. Okay? Good. Okay. That was a little less. So, and then we're going to put some basil in. Do we go back to questions? Now, yeah. Yes, that was a basil. That was a basil. Okay, I'm going to put the salt in. Okay, don't, don't panic. Is that don't I panic. That's iodized salt, right? No. Oh. Question. Who had the question? Okay. I just put a little. Go ahead. You must stand up. Please rise. Yes, we do use fertilizers. We use commercial fertilizers. Okay. Question. Oh. Methods of irrigation, uh, we are 95% under drip irrigation. Uh, the only time we don't is when we pre-irrigate with sprinklers. Um, people ask, is it that more efficient? It's not that it's more efficient. It's more, it's, you're able to cover more ground with the same water. So for instance, we have one, one ranch that would be like say 65 acres. We have one well on it. Before when we had free irrigation, you had to schedule it. You had to go over it real fast and then come back. So basically, you were on that watering it the whole time. Where now, we run a 12-hour set. Then it'll lay off for 12 or 24 or 36 hours. Then we'll come back and water it again. And there's a less chances of getting behind in irrigation. So if you start get, getting heat spells, you can kind of stack up on the water side of it. And it gets real hot to just turn it on and let it run all night, 24 hours. And it's wet by the next morning. So... And then issues with tail water and stuff like that, water quality and runoff, and we have been facing that. Um, so it's a lot better when we're on drip irrigation. So. Okay. Well, yes. thank you. Thank you. This is. Okay. This is the tomato one. 
that you guys had? Yes. I hope you all tasted it. Yes. Did you taste it? Did you taste the tomato one? You gonna feed me? I like that one better. <laughs> Just my opinion. You know, on pizza, on bread. We have a question in the back. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the Italian one. This one that looks like that. Looks like a little spaceship. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. This one. Mm -hmm. That's yes, the one. That, that's the one that you had in the bruschetta. I I love this tomato. What's its name? Yeah. If I tomato. tell you, I gotta kill you. <laughs> uh, it's just an Italian type. I have no idea. I can't pronounce it. Uh, we got a couple little packets from our seed guy, and they, they, it's all written in Italian, and I don't know what it says. <laughs> that's the honest truth. I don't know. Well, you guys. I, I want to thank all of you. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. I hope that you all enjoyed yourself. Um, thank you to LJB Farms uh, and the Beninos. Well, they are, that is the Beninos. Uh, Louis, Judy, Benino, LJB. We're missing a brother. We're mo missing Brent, who right now is not feeling well. Um, and uh, I hope that you really all enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed your, your uh, bruschetta. Yeah. And uh, this, is, this is a show. It's called Cooking for All Seasons. And uh, you will, uh, I'm sure that this nice Marianne will make sure that you know uh, where you can come to the website. I have a website. Uh, it will be, the, I'll put the recipes on. It'll take, it'll take a while. They'll have to edit, they'll edit the show, and uh, I'm not sure exactly when it'll be on, but uh, maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll notify you. And I know that some of you don't live in the area because this is a public access show that shows from here, uh, Gary Morgan Hill, San Juan Batista, Hollister, <coughs> Salinas, Morgan, uh, Monterey, Carmel, and down south. Uh, but it is streaming. So if it's online, uh, you will be able to get it. So we will make sure that you know when it's there. Uh, it's called, it's cookingforallseasons.com. Cookingforallseasons.com. And uh, I'm sure that, and Marianne, will you put that in? Uh, I'm sure you have some newsletter or something like that, so we'll make sure. But I want to thank you all, and uh, please enjoy yourself tonight, and thank my cameraman. Thank you. CD, DVD, whatever they call it, I don't know. And it will be a floppy disk. No, no, no. And it will be on TV. Now, if there's, for some reason, you do not want to be on TV, <laughs> I'm not going to say why you don't want to be on TV, but if you don't want to be, put your hands on your face. <laughs> when he pan, because he's panning now, and you're, and you're all getting recorded. So wave, if you want to wave. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi. Hi. Huh? It's going to be on Oprah. Oh, yeah, this is going to be on Oprah for sure. Yeah.